What if I told you there's something that's helped you stand out from the rest that is seriously preventing you from attracting an extraordinary man into your life? What if I told you it's not your ambition, it's not your intelligence, and it has nothing to do with your physical appearance? If you're a high achieving woman, you'll want to stick around to figure out what this is and better yet, how you can finally attract the guy you want without struggling and without having to change the core of who you are. One of the top frustrations of many of my clients when I first start working with them is that they can't figure out for the life of them why they've been able to achieve so much in their career, why they've been able to create so much abundance in their lives. And this is the one area of their life that doesn't seem to work. It's almost like if the laws of gravity don't apply to this specific situation. For example, they've been able to pass the bar exam and become a partner at the law firm. Maybe they've gone through medical school, become specialized in pediatric surgery, or maybe they have their own business and they lead a team of 20 plus people, and yet they can't get the type of guy they want to pursue them and to pop the question. And they look around them and they see a bunch of women who are not as intelligent or successful as they are, sometimes not even as great looking as they are in their own minds, and they have a relationship that feels meaningful and they can't. So this creates a spiraling loop of sadness, frustration, sometimes even shame, where they start thinking there's something wrong with me. There has to be something wrong with me if this isn't happening. Or they start blaming the world or their city or men. When in reality, if there is a way for you to get what you want, but the one thing you need to understand if you want to shift this is that the reason why many successful women can't get the relationship they crave, can't create the pursuit they want in men, is because they're using the energy of grit, the energy of hustle, the energy of making it happen, and applying it as a project into their dating life. And unfortunately, or fortunately, if you want to look at it that way, it doesn't work that way with guys. Why? Because men need to work for what they earn to value it. Because the degree of pursuit and activation and excitement towards connecting with you is in some ways related to the level of challenge he needs, he's experiencing. That doesn't mean you make it harder than it needs to be. That doesn't mean you play games. That doesn't mean that you time your texts so they always go out three hours. No, none of that nonsense. It just means that the natural way that you show up should present some level of challenge. And if it does, and he sees the energy in you as something exciting and attractive, he'll be activated to pursue. If you are doing his job, if you're managing the project as a CEO or engineer that you are, and spoon feeding him in ways that decrease his level of interest, then he's not going to be excited to connect with you. The last reason why this doesn't work is because if a guy feels forced, if a guy feels like you're really trying too hard, he's going to feel a needy energy from you and he's going to create this prevalent energy in him where he craves space, he craves independence, and that's the opposite of what you want. Here's the great news. You, my dear, if you fall into this category of highly successful, high achieving, you've made things happen in your life. You already understand intrinsically and in your heart how to create something from nothing. You have results in your life. This is just not one of them. So if you make some switches, so some changes, some shifts, you can create a lot more of what you want. It doesn't have to become a painful road. It can be something fulfilling and exciting. And what I'm about to do is share with you the five top shifts I would invite you to make if you want to create this change in your life. The first shift is going from making it happen to inspiring it to happen. It seems like a play on words, but it's not. There's a big difference in entering a space and working really hard to make it happen to showing up with more being than doing and allowing your being, your excitement, your aliveness, your heart connection, your expressiveness, your vulnerability, your radiance, your uniqueness, your magic, if you want to call it that, to punch him in the heart and the nuts at the same time, metaphorically speaking, and allowing that sense of feeling to, without you trying so hard, 
activating that sense in him to ask, to go forward, to connect, and to learn more about you. Another way of saying this is replacing heavy action with profound openness. Number two, I'd love for you to go from pursuing to allowing. And here is the sad truth. Many of you listening to me right now have many times pursued and even chasing guys. Yes, chasing guys energetically. How do you do this? Well, the guys, someone who in your mind checks your boxes. So you're going to lower your standards of connection with them and show up far stronger as if you were making your whatever project fill in the blank work, whether it's your medical schooling, whether it's your legal uh, career. If you go with the same energy with him, if you show up with that level of energy, when he, let's say, says, I want to see you on Saturday. And instead of waiting for him to call you on Saturday, Saturday morning comes along. And then Saturday midday comes along. And then you remind him of your existence. Hey, I'm here. Are we still on for the date? Here's the thing. There's nothing wrong with you doing that. But do you want for a guy who's asking you on a date, the reason for really finally asking you, because you reminded him of your existence? What happens if you relax and let him show up? What happens if he doesn't show up? Somebody else will. How else do you do this? Sometimes a guy stops losing interest and you start texting him far more frequently and he feels this needy energy. And instead of pursuing you, he relaxes. And almost like the more he relaxes, the more you validate and the more you reinforce this shitty behavior through showing up more strongly for him. I have nothing against you initiating at times. I have nothing against you calling a guy or texting a guy or even asking a guy if you really want to. My challenge is if this behavior hasn't served you, if you showing up and you doing most of the work hasn't served you, then perhaps relaxing and allowing will show you what's real. Because what happens when you relax, you practice this thing that I shared where you show up with more presence than doing and the guy doesn't follow up. If the guy isn't pursuing you when you're being your best, then guess what happens? <laughs> you are going to recognize that this is someone you probably don't want to invest a lot of energy in. Invest your energy and time in men who are showing up strongly for you, not men that you are falling for despite their bad treatment or their indifference of you. Number three, I'd love for you to go from having a rigid checkbox that maybe your church or your society at large or Instagram or your parents or a combination of things unevaluated has given you. And I want you to go instead for his character, for a set of values that make sense and meaning to you, and for the feelings that you have, not about the guy, but about yourself when you're with a guy. So if you connect with him and you feel excited, but then the guy is not following up with you, and you notice that you're mostly feeling unseen, unappreciated, unpursued, then pay attention to those feelings. Why? Because you've been telling yourself so strongly that the, the guy's checking all the boxes because he has the right physique. He has the right career. He seems to be ambitious. And you're allowing those check boxes to override the feeling of he's not really appreciating you. He's not really into you. But yet you're kind of going by this paper, this resume, that's not really the foundation of how you feel alive and connected in the relationship. Now, before I share my last two points, if you're a single woman watching this, in addition to showing up with this energy of hustle, there might be another psychological blind spot that's preventing you right now from attracting the guy you want. So what I've done is I've taken 13 years of helping women in all walks of life, all types of challenges to finally attract their ideal guy, the one they thought would never arrive to finally arrive and put it together in a, in a simple quiz so you can take in about 60 seconds that will reveal to you the number one reason you're still single. And if you want to participate, all you have to do is go to the first link in the description. You will see a page that looks like this. Answer a few simple questions and in 60 seconds or less, you'll have the answer to the question why you're still single. And also a report that's going to share with you based on your specific blind spot, what's the number one action you can take starting today to reverse this trend you're on and attract the guy you want in a fraction of the time. Fifth shift that I want you to make is go from mostly strategizing when you connect with men when you're on dates, to mostly being in your heart. Here is the thing. If when you're connecting with guys, you haven't stopped your internal dialogue, 
and you're mostly checking the boxes and overthinking it, you are going to not just miss the point of dating, but the point of existence. You'll miss out on the magic, the connection, the presence, the aliveness, the playfulness, the experience that is only available when your heart is rested and when you allow that interaction to really permeate your being. So I'm not saying don't be strategic because strategy is a really important part of dating consciously. What I'm saying is don't let the strategy and the thinking override your nuance, your intuition, and your feeling of presence with them. When you can relax more, breath is important when you're connecting with them. What else can you do? Meditation before the date, movement, dance. Whenever you allow that presence to permeate the date, he's going to be five times more likely to ask you out on another date because he felt something special coming from you. When you're in your head trying to have this super big internal dialogue, not really witnessing what's happening, he will not feel as seen. You will not be as present. You'll miss out on some big red flags and he will not feel excited to pursue you or ask you out on another date most likely. The last one is, and this is incredibly important for you super high achiever, you need to embrace and risk failure. Here's what I mean. Many of you have thrived through mitigating risk and through avoiding failure as much as possible. Here's the thing. You want to do things in a smart way where you don't go through unnecessary failure. Connect with a guy, have sex with him on the first date. Well, that's a failure you could have avoided if you had waited a little longer. But there's going to be failure that's avoidable. For example, you show up with a little more vulnerability than you want to, and then you feel a little shaky at the end. That's a risk worth taking. Or you relax a little bit more than usual, and the guy hasn't contacted you, and you're overthinking it. That's a risk worth taking. Risk failing by doing things differently than you've done them before. Step into your heart step into your being, step into your radiance, step into allowing a conscious man to pursue you and figure out who is the best fit to connect with you based on the way he shows up, not based on the way you have felt about him, mostly as a result of a projection. Hope this is helpful and useful. And if it is, it would mean the world to me and to my channel if you click like and subscribe. And if you want to continue learning how you can attract your ideal life partner without the need for gimmicks, manipulation, games, or stupid techniques, make sure to watch the next video right here.